my name is Chris and I work with the City of Vancouver. I wanted to recognize that the City of Vancouver is on the unceded territory of the Squamish, Musqueam and Tsleil-Waututh. Um, and I also wanted to recognize that often presentations on buildings and efficiency can be super, super boring. Uh, <laughs> one of the first presentations to City Council uh, my boss was doing was being his wife was home recording it and uh, and uh, the mics, mic was hot from the mayor and one of the first things, just as he was starting his presentation, the mayor said, uh, how many more of these boring staff presentations do we have to listen to, right? Because it was about energy efficiency standards, so I'm always sort of conscious of, of that when, when I speak. So I guess what I'd, what, what I'd say going in um, is I'll put two numbers on the board. Uh, the numbers are sort of family incomes and give some thought to like which family would have more time. Uh, Obviously, everyone has the same amount of time in the day, but I'm thinking about sort of free time. So this is the family's overall pre-tax income. I mean, I don't think I need to do a show of hands, but I, but I will. Who would agree that this family is more likely to have um, more free time? I think most people knew them, right? And why? Because this family is able to use money to substitute for some tasks. Maybe they have a, someone that cleans their, their home. <clears throat> so imagine I'm designing two programs, and one's a low-income program, and one's not. Imagine the not low-income program. I charge $0 to make an application. And imagine the low-income program. I charge $200. I think most people would agree that's a poorly designed program, and I'm not trying to throw any critique. I really appreciate the work that's being done at the province and the incentive program that, that the province has launched uh, for low income. It's, it's, it's good. Um, there are opportunities to improve. Uh, but if I designed a program and I charged $200 for uh, the low income participations and nothing for the entry to uh, the non-income qualified, I think people would be upset. Um, well, it's the same thing in that this program, you have to fill out an application to participate. It's a couple pages long. Most of us probably haven't done it, but if you have, and I know we've got Yasmin in the crowd. She's gone through that process um, to, to determine it. I, I've gone through this process, um, less than 15 minutes. I signed two forms, super quick. I don't know, Yasmin, like the low income, the income qualified program? I would, yeah, I would say eight yeah. Couple hours? Well, Yeah. So one of the questions, Betsy, and I'll go on to my presentation shortly, but one of the questions that Betsy put forward was like, <clears throat> you know, what's, what's not working and what needs to change? Why, why, this is my own sort of question in Vancouver, why do we have low participation in the income qualified program? Well, it's because there's greater barriers um, to the income qualified program. Um, I don't, won't pick any more at it, but that's one challenge um, that exists. And I think we place a greater burden on participation. And on this program, you have to provide your income, right? It's been invasive. Um, you have to demonstrate that you can get into this program. That program, everyone's welcome. So that's, that's a challenge. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, um, Yasmin could go, go into that a little bit more, but I'll, I'll come around to this concept at the end of my presentation. So the city of Vancouver, if I were to give us a grade out of, you know, 100% and they're my employer, um, my, my boss was supposed to be here, but he it ended up not, which could be better or worse. But I would say maybe, like, optimistically, I'd give us, like, a 45%. Like, I don't think we do a great job considering income. And I think a lot of it goes, well, the, someone goes, a senior staff will say, well, the province has an income qualified program. Didn't they take care of that? And my sort of response is, well, have you ever tried to use the low income program? Does it work? If you don't know it works, uh, then you're really just sort of pretending the work has been done. It, it hasn't actually been done. And so I'd say, just as a criticism to my own employer, we haven't done as much as we should. I'll go into a little bit of background about what I do think we've done that's decent. We have some goals around the climate emergency, um, so kind of around a walkable city and 90% of people living within an easy walk or roll of their daily needs. I think that's a positive um, 
goal that cons that considers income and benefits um, persons of a wide range of incomes. Um, safe and convenient, active and uh, active transportation and transit. I think that's a, a goal there where we want two thirds of trips to be in Vancouver to be by active transportation and transit, um, which would be 10 years earlier than we'd originally planned. We've made some good, good progress there. Um, pollution free cars, trucks and buses. By 2030, we want 50% of the kilometers driven on Vancouver's roads to be zero emissions vehicles, so electric buses, electric taxis. But most of my presentation deals with this fourth one, zero emission space and water heating. And by 2025, we want all new and replacement uh, heating and hot water systems to be zero emissions. So functionally in, in new homes, that means electric. So that's mostly heat pumps. Um, for existing, it might be a, a blend of um, electric and gas. Just for context, um, Vancouver is Canada's densest city, statistically. Um, low rise is 70%. So that's what I work on. I work on buildings that are three stories and under. So if you think about like what sort of buildings we can work on, and <clears throat> there's lots of energy and interest in working on big buildings, and that's wonderful. I don't have anything to do with that. But I just wanted to impress on the, the, the challenge and the opportunity in working with single-family, duplex, townhouse, row house, um, smaller buildings and even small apartment buildings under four stories. There's a huge opportunity even in Canada's densest city. So I'll talk about some actions, some sort of successes. Um, I wrote changes to our building code. Vancouver has its own building code. Um, we only allow electric heating and domestic hot water as of January 1st, 2022. It was one of the more difficult reports I took forward. It actually went to council twice after industry uh, although many parts of industry um, uh, were in favor, one group, the Canadian Institute of Plumbing and Heating, were very against, um, and it, it did pass in the end, and implementation has been quite smooth uh, in the end. Um, the technology is available, and I think there are challenges with market economies, but one of the things they do well is when given clear direction, they, they harness and bring forward solutions. Uh, in talking about equity, um, we targeted large renovations, so someone spending uh, over $250,000 on a renovation is likely to be in a position economically to electrify their space heating and domestic hot water. So that's a requirement now for all renovations over $250,000. Another thing that I took my own horn I thought was good is uh, we regulated large homes first. So homes over 325 square meters, which is 3,500 square feet. If you live in a house that's over 3,500 square feet, you live in the top 2% of houses in Canada in terms of home size. So the bigger, bigger homes. Um, statistically, people in larger homes are better off economically. Uh, and so by regulating those homes first, they do the early adoption of, uh, of, of technology and that kind of learning. <coughs> One of the pieces we talked about a little bit today was energy poverty and sort of how much uh, ener energy is used um, by a home and a household. So I like this um, graph. You don't have to know what a kilowatt hour is, but it's easy to say like 20,000 is more than 7,000, which is more than 1,900. This is the amount of energy used to heat an average home in the city of Vancouver that was built in 2006, 2019, 2022. So that's better envelopes. That's thicker walls. That's <coughs> uh, better windows. Um, that's heat recovery. So if you set aside any choice around heating fuel, because here we're only using heat pumps, but here we're using whatever people want. Uh, um, if you set that aside, just the energy use has gone down significantly. And it's one thing I'd really love to see the province do, and I know Nat's kind of working towards that. As we go to net zero homes uh, and, and going to homes that are heated with a heat pump, I mean, in any case, this house will cost less to heat than this house, no matter what fuel choice you make, heat pump. Uh, you can make any fuel choice here, and a heat pump will cost less to heat, not to mention this house or any house built before that. So all, that's all new construction. Um, so slowly, as buildings are replaced, and I know a couple of panelists, um, I think Rowan uh, touched on it, uh, Colin, um, Abby and Ian all kind of touched on there was a period where buildings were built that, that weren't weren't great and maybe we need to start over. Every time we tear down a home in Vancouver, this is what it gets replaced with. So just from a energy point of view, um, building codes should deliver uh, energy efficient buildings because they result in low operating costs and reduce energy poverty. Okay, cool, and I'll just end, as I'll say, uh, greenhouse gases, similar, and uh, 
Uh, we've got a mandate now to move forward uh, with some time of sale um, regulations that we're consulting on. And the last closing slide is just, you know, I really want to understand the present case that we have for um, uh, for uh, energy offers and utility offers and improve it. So I'm hoping to launch a 10 home pilot where we'll work through uh, the challenges of the income qualified program and try to give uh, feedback. I'd like to model it, uh, model the outcome off the free heat pump um, program that's in PI Nova Scotia and ideally get to a point where if someone's in an income qualified home, they just say, I want to put a heat pump in and then it's turnkey. In a perfect world, the utility comes, they install it, you get lower operating cost, and you don't have to worry about um, uh, having challenges. Uh, thanks very much. This is a heat pump in from 1948. Uh, we found it in the wall of a house we were retro retrofitting in the city of Vancouver. It's the very first heat pump in, uh, in Vancouver. Thanks very much. Have a great day. Thank you.